In this video, I'm going to tell you how battle-hardened veteran programmers think differently than new programmers. Watch all the way to the end to make sure that you're thinking like a pro and not like you wrote your first line of JavaScript yesterday. So we will compare how new programmers think versus experienced programmers on five different dimensions. Let's get started. Let's get right into number one. New programmers think code is for computers, but veterans know that code is for people. Slow down, Aaron. Code is obviously for computers. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, code is run on a computer, but if you don't write code that's easy to understand and change later, then that code is actually useless. New programmers just try to get things working at all costs, but veterans know that good variable names, consistent design patterns, and leaving comments if they're needed are all fundamental to writing good code. And by the way, code being easier to understand is why programming languages evolved from assembly to C to Python and so on. By the way, writing clean code is not just for your team, it's for your future self too. Because trust me, in a month, you're not gonna remember what the variable you named XYZ was. Okay, number two, new programmers think that coding is all about language you use or even about logic, but veterans know it's about more than that. You might've heard before that it doesn't matter what language you focus on first, you should instead focus on the logic of programming, which is to a degree true, yes. The truth is loops, if statements, variables, these things are not that hard to understand. The hard part is how you fit them together in the greater context of the program you're writing. And to a degree, every language has its own logical patterns built into it, so you can't really separate imperative C programming from highly declarative Python programming, for example. What I'm trying to say is just throwing a couple ifs and loops on the page is not gonna magically make the program do what you want. You have to come up with a high-level plan, hold it in your head, and then implement it using the tools that you know. And just knowing these new little tricks, well, that's not gonna be enough. So high level, big picture, boil it down into smaller parts. This is really programmatic thinking. And you're thinking, fine, how do I actually do that? Well, you basically have to observe other people's design patterns. And for this, you need to read a lot of code, which brings us to point number three. And this is a huge mistake new programmers make. New programmers usually end up reading code or writing code, where veterans, they read and write code at the same time. I use a computer analogy here. Now, every new programmer has done this, watched a whole tutorial end to end, feel like they're learning, like storing the information in their mental hard drive. And then at the end, you open up a code editor trying to do what you just learned and your fingers don't move. You didn't learn anything. Yeah, it's a painful experience. So here's how veterans do it. They only search for the code they need when they need it. And that way they can immediately produce their own version of it. This is for a few reasons. Number one, it just saves time and mistakes. So if you remember something 85 to 90%, then you're still gonna have a bug. So you might as well just look up the working example and then tailor it to your use case. And then number two, there's just so many little things you need to remember that veterans don't even try to store it all in their head. Naturally, some of it goes in there over time, but you don't really ever need to memorize anything. So if you're, for example, trying to write some responsive CSS, veterans know exactly what to Google, and you can actually get so good at this that you don't even write code, you just copy and you paste. I'm just kidding about that part, kind of. Okay, number four, new programmers think there's math and magic involved in programming. Veterans know it's all about abstract thinking and data. Now, of course, in real life, magic is real, but it's not in programming. And that's why every time you run the program, it will work the same way. Now, over the years, I've literally talked to thousands of new programmers. And if they have a bug in their code, I always ask this question and then they solve their own problem more than half the time. I ask, what are the values of the variables? Here's the thing, if you don't know the values of your variables in the code you're trying to write, you must believe in magic because you are never gonna figure that out. You can't write new code before you understand all the current existing code. So if you catch yourself doing that, think, hold on, I gotta audit this first, understand what everything is, and I can easily add to this. And in real life, most of the time you're gonna be reading or editing code and not writing code from scratch. Here is also a bit of good news. I mentioned math a bit before because new programmers think they're missing something without knowing math. and yeah, people who already know math are usually pretty good at programming, but veterans know the reason is not because of any specific algebra trick. It's because people who know math are very good at abstract thinking. They're already used to storing variable values in their head and they understand how variables can evolve over time. But you can develop this skill in parallel by just getting a lot of practice with programming. So even if you never did math after 11th grade, like me, you're still gonna be fine if you get enough practice. All right, number five, this is a big one. New programmers think problems are too hard and they give up. Veterans are able to solve any problem and here's how. Here's the thing, when you get your first job, your project manager is gonna give you a task. You can't just go back and say, mm, this one was too hard. 
who else is gonna do it? Now, believe it or not, there is a way to solve that problem, whatever it is. And I don't mean just continuing to try it until you figure it out. That's called brute forcing, not very efficient. Here's what you can do though. Number one, you can go out and learn to fill the gaps in your knowledge. Just because you've never written Next.js doesn't mean you can't learn it in a day or two and adapting online examples to your use case. Well, let's be honest, you probably knew that. And if you Google enough, you're usually gonna find something, but not always. What you can also do to solve any problem is get help. If you're struggling to understand some code and you're in a company, there's almost always someone who wrote that code you can go directly to and have them explain it. Even if not, there's probably someone above or more experienced than you in that company. You'd be assigned a mentor, a tech lead, or a senior developer. And you can, of course, go to them and get some help, but it's important that you do step number one first. You try some different stuff. Number one, because their time is valuable. And number two, so you can tell them what you already tried. But let's say those things, trying to learn and asking a mentor didn't work. There's another way that we can solve any problem problem and it's called redefining the problem because honestly yeah sometimes the way the problem is defined is not possible but more often it's not optimal meaning there's usually a better way to do it so if you can think of a better way of doing it and frame it as a benefit to everyone reducing the time required or the complexity in these cases redefining the problem can actually be better than solving the original problem now, of course this intuition of what works best takes time to develop but a couple examples are having a non-technical product manager and just saying hey this isn't realistic we should probably do it this way they'll listen to you or for example in the freelancing world if a client comes to you and they want a site built from scratch you can suggest the platform which is going to reduce complexity make things faster ease of use is going to be better it's just better across the board and if you come in with confidence they'll listen to you all right those are the five ways hope that got you thinking a little bit about your blind spots that you might have and if you already knew all this stuff congrats you're probably already in good shape if you learned something that would consider subscribing I'm trying to get to 300k i've been almost there for so long so I'd appreciate your tapping the subscribe button and uh, I'll talk to you very soon. Catch you later.